Good morning and welcome to another fabulous math video. Today is uh, Wednesday, March 9, 2021, and let's let's get to work. Okay, today is um, kind of like a, a, a a day where we're gonna put together everything we've learned, we've been learning in the last, gosh, I, what video is this? I think this is the last, I think I've done five videos for you, five or six videos. Um, so today's all gonna come together in this lesson. So please, you need your volume one book, lesson 10.13, and that's gonna be on page 387, 387, I'll give you a couple of uh, seconds to find a page in your book. Make sure that once you find that page, you uh, write uh, your name and today's date. All right, let's begin then. Again, uh, we're gonna go straight into um, the problem. Well, again, so these uh, four steps here is gonna be your stepping stone, your success criteria. First thing we're gonna be doing is finding the order pairs. Second thing is we're gonna use those order pairs to create an input output table. Three, we're gonna label the pattern. Is it multiplying or is it adding? And lastly, we're gonna write the rule. That's gonna be our ultimate goal here. So let's let's go ahead and um, look at the problem here. It says, Sana has some dimes. Adil offers to give her nickels for her dimes. The graph shows the relationships between the number of dimes Sana gives Adil and the number of nickels she receives in exchange. Find the rule to describe the pattern. So today you're going to be seeing um, the the the, or, the coordinate grids come back. Okay, we haven't seen those this week, but they're coming back today. First thing, success criteria is finding the order of pairs. So we're going to go here and look the first one. They already gave us the first uh, order pair. Remember, when you are working on a uh, coordinate grid, you always go to the beginning. Do you remember what that that beginning point was called? Like where everything starts. Started with an O, I'll give you a hint. That's right, it's an origin. Okay, so always go to the origin and move to the right first and up. And they're showing arrows here. So the first order pair is going to be one and then move up two. So that's going to be one comma two. They wrote it here for me, so I'm just going to fill it in. Here, they already gave me the, the, the one. I'll put the two. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to find the second order pair. They haven't filled that one for me, so I'm gonna write it right here, okay? So now you're gonna move two to the right and then move four up, because you go one, two, three, four, two, comma, four, okay? this excellent so let's move on to the next one um, here it goes I needed that so it's two four then you go to the next one you move one two three four yeah three and then one two three four five six three to the right and six up. I'm gonna fill in the six right here. And the last but not least, starting at the origin, move four to the right. So that's my first order pair, comma, and I'm gonna move eight up. Four, comma, eight. There it is. I fill it in here. That was the first success criteria. Second thing, I'm gonna use the space here to create my input output table. So, you're gonna use 
Um, remember, at the top, you always put the input. In this case, this is dime, so we're going to use the letter D to represent dimes. And we're going to use an N to represent nickels. So the input, it's always here on the x-axis. So this is dimes. Let's go ahead and write dimes. And the output, as we know, is always on the y-axis. So the output here is going to be nickels. Okay. Go ahead and do that, please. And I know Benjamin, Benjamin might be thinking right now, well, I already finished the book, Mr. Juarez. The question is, did you do these specific steps? And are you showing the work that I'm showing here? Benjamin, if the answer is no, then I need you to go and do exactly what I'm doing here. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna put in this order pairs and it's like we're going backwards. It's gonna be one, two, the next one is two, four. The next one is three, six. And the last one is four, eight. Go ahead and do that. Once you do that, then you go and start to find a pattern. Move from X to Y. How do I get from one to two? Well, I could add one or I could multiply times two. But if I look here, I can tell that it's gonna be times two. One times two, two. Two times two, four. Three times two, six and four times two equals eight now here this is a, a a type of pattern that is multiplying okay so whenever you're multiplying your pattern you, it's called multiplicative say it after me multiplicative your turn multiplicative multiplicativo i can English Spanish sound very similar. So this is a multiplicative uh, pattern. Um, so let's write it here. Multiplicative. Okay. So I found the order of pairs. I created my input output table, I labeled the pattern, and the last thing I need to do is to write the rule. Here, um, my, my rule is gonna be nickel, so the output equals the input, and what am I doing to the input? Times two, absolutely. And you go from there, okay? In other words, um, N, sorry, yeah, N equals D times two. You gotta make sure you have all the different pieces, guys. All the different pieces. I know it seems like a lot of work, but I promise you, doing this work now is gonna help you a lot later on in the future because it's making you think through all the different pieces that, um, that you guys are gonna need to do eventually in other levels of math. Okay. So you are ready for the next word problem. All right, if you turn a page, you're gonna find this, um, this problem. And here it's telling you, 
additive patterns can also be represented in a, in a graph, right? If you can see, additive has the word add on it. So I need to infer that I'm gonna be, that my pattern or my rule in this problem is gonna require me to add a certain, a certain value. Let's see if that's true. Jack mails some magazines in a box. Jack is in my problem and he is mailing some magazines. The graph shows the relationship, connection, between the number of magazines, and I'm gonna put M here, go ahead and do that too, and the total weight of the magazines. Total weight and number of magazines. Total weight, so I'm gonna use the letter W. Now, it's gonna see how many, how these two are connected. It's, but think about it, y'all. Like, if you put more magazines in a box, is that gonna get heavier or lighter? Yeah, it's gonna be, get heavier. So that should start. That should help you infer what's gonna happen to my values. Are they gonna increase or decrease? All right, let's let, let's figure it out. So, success criteria one. Find the order of pairs. Let's do it. They gave me the first one, one comma three. Second success criteria. Let's go ahead and write it down. Now I'm just gonna do like a little error here because I don't want it to be all um, too bunched up in one small area. It's gonna be two comma four. Okay, that's my second success criteria. I'm sorry, my second order pair. My third order pair, let's take a look at it. Go back to the origin. What is that one? Three comma five. And my last one, well, that they're showing me, it's gonna be four comma six. That's a four, I promise. Four comma six, I'm gonna fill it in here, I forgot to do that. Five and six. Let's go ahead and create our little input output table. Remember, on the top, it's always the x value. In the x value, it's always on the x axis. Here's the number of magazines. So I'm gonna put M. And here is the weight in ounces. That's on the y axis and it's always in the bottom. I'm gonna put W. Do that for me, please. I'm going to do four values, one, two, three, and four. Is that, it's almost like key. This is the ones that are right here. So one comma three, two comma four, three comma five, and four comma six. Okay. I... If I'm looking at my success criteria, I first found the order pairs, check. Then I created my input output table, check. Now I'm gonna label the pattern. Let's figure out what that is. From one to three, you could either multiply times three. Let's, let's check it, right? One times three equals three. Okay, that works. Two times three, how much is it? It's six, does it show six? No, so you're not multiplying. So here it's gonna be plus two. Two plus two, four. Three plus two, five. And four plus two, that's six. And guess what? I found my pattern, right? This is a plus two pattern. And that is what we call, ladies and gentlemen, additive. Because I'm adding to my Y value. Next thing I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna write the rule. I'm gonna use this space right here, okay? The output equals, so the output remember is um, the, on my y-axis, which I have right here, it's W. I keep forgetting to write the, the variable. Don't forget to do that. The output equals the input And what am I doing to the input? That's right, I'm adding plus two, okay? And that'll help me create the output W equals, equals the input, and that's M plus two. Alrighty, I wrote the rule. Okay, give you a few seconds to finish that. And then um, after you finish it, I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do next. And you go from there. Okay, so as you work through the problems, make sure that you continue to use your success criteria. Those are a must. You cannot leave them out. You have to use them. I need to see evidence of those four success criteria on your work. So as you work on these problems, Whoever is in your classroom today is going to be checking that you that you did first. You found the order pairs the same way I found them. That you created your input output table. So I'm going to need an input output table, for example, right here. That you labeled your pattern. Is it additive? Or multiplicative? And lastly, we're gonna be looking for the rule, which means the output equals blah, 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 and then your actual um, equation. If you need, if you forgot how to do that, just look in the problems previous to this. We, we did exactly, we used the success criteria here to answer the top problem. So if you don't remember how to do it, just look up. At, that one problem, right? Don't look up at the ceiling because uh, it's not going to be there. Just look at your previous work. Okay, so you're going to work. Do me a favor, circle. Problem one, problem two. And I'm actually here. You're going to work on page 391. And if you finish with that, you can move on to the back of that page. Estamos? All right. Remember, don't forget, you need to be submitted your DOLs and all in learning. Um, that way we, we can get a grade for your work. All right. Your time. Um, it's, it's your time now. Uh, please, if you remember, if you have any questions or anything, just ask whoever is here. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come around and and help you. But remember, use your success criteria to help you guide your work today. Chilaganas.